now we are going to start with an important topic that is the hybridization right see what is the hybridization it is actually intermixing of atomic orbitals it is intermixing of atomic orbitals what atomic orbitals those atomic orbitals which have slight difference in their energies like for example i have we have the these kind of orbitals arranged right so that means they can intermix their uh, energies they can intermix their energy so that means it is applicable only to the orbitals which have slightly same energy right so that means intermixing of atomic orbitals of slightly different energy and when they just mix up they give rise to the new orbitals which are called as hybrid orbitals and they have same energy and same shape right so that means when they just intermix they give rise to new set of orbitals named as hybrid orbitals equivalent in shape and equivalent in energy this is what is the hybridization but now when we perform hybridization there are certain rules which is to be followed right see number of hybrid orbitals will be always equal to the number of atomic orbitals that get mixed up suppose i say that 2s and 2p are going to intermix their energy so that means how many orbitals are there s has one orbital you know that and the p has three orbitals so that means four orbitals are going to mix up so when these four orbitals are going to mix up they are give they will give rise to four uh, hybrid orbitals right and hybrid orbitals will always have same energy and shape it is clear from the definition as well that as i told you that after intermixing they will give rise to the orbitals which will have same energy and same shape right they are more capable of forming stable bonds they are capable of forming more stable bond as we compare with their atomic orbital and uh, they will direct themselves in the space in such a direction to in order to minimize the repulsion so that they can have a perfect geometry right so as we'll be discussing that see as you can see the geometry of these molecules so they are oriented in space in a preferred direction so as to repulse uh, this thing uh, reduce the repulsion and give rise to a perfect geometry a stable arrangement and moreover the, you have to know that that only valence shell electrons are going to participate in only valence shell electrons are going to participate and excitation is not a compulsory factor i'll just explain you with an example then these will be clear right and uh, which uh, atoms hybridize more it is c o and n and the terminal h c l and f they do not hybridize much right so let us take an example then it will be clear see suppose i have example of ch4 i am going to hybrid show you the hybridization of carbon in this case so in this case which is my central atom obviously c right so i am just going to write the atomic number for it so it is 6 now i'll write the configuration 1s2 2s2 2p2 i'm just going to draw the orbitals in order to show that how the electrons are present so we have this 1s we have this 2s and we have this 2p so likewise these are present so that is a ground state configuration we say that this is a ground state configuration now i'm going to excite it right so when we excite it we know that inner shells do not participate the only those orbitals which have same energy participate so that means in this 2s and 2p is going to participate so this is what originally we have right so now what i'm going to do when i'm going to supply energy this electron is going to be move from here to the this empty orbital right so in the, in this way this is an excited state so in this way now four half filled orbitals are there right so this they have to accommodate four hydrogen so they will accommodate four hydrogen because they have four unpaired electrons so this is our hybridization so how many s participated obviously one s orbital participated how many p participated obviously three so its hybridization becomes sp3 so this is how you are going to uh, this thing give the hybridization of this thing and uh, you know there is one more method like if i give you some formula suppose i give you uh, nh3 and i ask you that i just want uh, just uh, predict the hybridization without doing this process so you have a clear cut formula where you can just predict the hybridization how see as we know that there is a formula that is the half into valence shell electron of central atom plus number of neighboring atoms minus if there is a charge of cation and plus if there is any charge if it is an anion right so here i am going to find the hybridization for nh3 by this direct formula so that means it is half the central atom is obviously n and what valence electron does it have you know that it, atomic number is 7 and valence electron is 5 
So, it is 5 plus how many neighboring atoms? H3 that means 3 and do you get to see any charge above? No. So, that means we are not going to follow this rule because it is neither cation nor an ion it is a neutral molecule. So, that means it is 1 uh, half into 8 comes out to be 4. Now, I am going to distribute this 4 among S, P, D right number uh, depending upon the orbitals. So, 1 S has 1 orbital. So, it will be S P has 3 orbitals. So, 3 we are finished with 4. So, again its hybridization is S P 3. So, this is the formula to predict the hybridization when you have to predict the hybridization directly by not performing this task then you can just predict by using this formula that is half into valence uh, electron of central atom plus number of neighboring atom minus if there is a cation charge of cation and plus if it is an anion. So, likewise we can have different hybridization see we can have S P hybridization, we can have S P 2 hybridization, we can have S P 3, S P 3 D, S P 3 D. 2 and sp3 3 there can be more hybridization also but at your level you should be familiar with these hybridization so when i talk about sp hybridization so that means it is intermixing of 1s and 1p right and you know what is the shape is going to be see it is 1 and 2 2 orbitals so of it it will give rise to a linear geometry this way right and likewise it, sp2 1s and 2p the total of 3 so that means they will give rise to a triangular geometry like this and this sp3 is 1s and 3p it will give rise to a or total is 4 it give, will give rise to a tetrahedral geometry sp3d that is 1s 3p 1d it is give rise to a triangle bipyramidal geometry and sp3d2 1s 3p 2d this is what you can see here so, total of 3, 4, 5, 6, it will give rise to an octahedral geometry. So, this is how we predict geometry in these cases. I will write one example for all. SP hybridization, let us say BECL2, SP2, the, let it be BCL3, boron trichloride, SP3, let it be CH4, SP3, uh, D, SP3, D, so it is total of 5. So, let it be PCL3. And sp3 d2 is 3, 4, 5, 6. So, it comes out to be sf6. Sorry, it is pcl5. So, likewise, and sp3 d3 is if7. So, th uh, like this way, we can have a different formulas. What you have to do? You have to pick the central atom, write its ground state configuration, uh, do the excitation if it is possible. And if there is no excitation required, then th it is not a compulsory factor that uh, always you have to show the excitation, right? And then just uh, combine them with the half filled orbitals. So, this is how we are going to perform the hybridization, right.